good morning everyone dear participants and esteemed chairperson thank you ranjit sir for uh, inviting me to this second international e conference on dna forensics based upon my experience i would like to share some of the recent advancements and technological advancements and how we can proceed with the current day forensic dna analysis in future so if we talk about forensic analysis of forensic practice or forensic science it's all about comparison and the basic fundamental thing about forensic science is that we explore some characteristics first of all we explore the class characteristics class characteristics it is suggests the evidences that can only be associated with a group which is not a unique source similarly there exists some unique or individual characteristics such evidences that can be attributed to a unique source with high degree of certainty those characteristics are called as individual characteristics or unique characteristics coming to dna technology what do we require is our prime aim should be individualization so we should go for individualization then how can we achieve individualization through dna analysis the basic forensic dna analysis workflow goes like this we have some forensic samples from those forensic samples first of all we extract dna for the extraction of dna we may employ various techniques that may be a manual dna extraction technique or automatic or semi automatic dna techniques after extraction of dna we need to quantify it quantification can be of uh, many types we can employ agarose gel electrophoresis we can go for uv visible spectrophotometer we can go for rtpcr based dna quantification also after quantifying we need a an optimum amount of dna for further analysis that is the purpose of dna quantification so after obtaining an optimum quantity of dna we go for pcr amplification and here we perform multiplex pcr that i will share with you on my next slides after amplification we go for capillary electrophoresis during this process of capillary electrophoresis what we do we separate all the amplified products on the basis of their size as well as on the basis of their dyes that are associated with each and every dna fragment and finally we obtain a dna profile so my basic aim to explore and to share with all of you that at which level we obtain a unique profile at which point of time we call a dna profile to be unique See, we generally do in a uh, routine forensic dna analysis we perform y chromosome str analysis in this y chromosome strs along with the y chromosome itself they are transferred in petal linear lineages so these are not unique they are the same the y chromosome str profile will be the same for all petal linear lineages in a population similarly if we talk about x chromosome str analysis though it is not associated with any lineage but they cannot be considered as unique because you see the male individual any male individual it will be having only one x chromosome and the female it will be having two sets of x chromosomes so it can be either or or both so it can never be a unique if unique profile if we consider amplifying or analyzing x chromosome str profiles but x chromosome str analysis it is highly useful in sample limiting conditions such as uh, in the first instance uh, this can be very useful for identification of a disputed female child 
when mother sample is un unavailable. Similarly, for the disputed male child, with father sample is unavailable. Uh, in the third case, when the disputed female child with father sample unavailable. And one more interesting fact about X chromosome STR analysis is that if it is a female child where both the parent sample is not available, by analyzing or by comparing comparing the X chromosome STR profile of a female child with its paternal grandmother, this can also solve the purpose of identification. Similarly, we also go for mitochondrial DNA analysis. All of you must be knowing that mitochondrial DNA, it is inherited in the metilineal lineage. So again, it cannot be considered to be a unique profile or unique characteristics. So now we came to know that gonosomal and extra, extra nuclear DNA analysis that doesn't, uh, they never lead to individualization. So they can be considered as the class characteristics. So now the question comes when and which label we go for uniqueness or individualization. Here comes the role of autosomal STR markers. Screen is visible. So auto, when we go for autosomal STR analysis, all of you must be knowing there are many STR markers, autosomal STR markers at different chromosomal positions. And after PCR amplification and selective amplification of such DNA fragments on such number of chromosomes, we obtain a DNA profile. This is called an autosomal STR DNA profile. This is a representative image that I have given here. To understand the profile, I will share with you some of the uh, uh, terminologies. STR markers, these are STR markers and uh, this, this uh, D3S1358, D8S117, and these are called as autosomal STR markers. The characteristics of these autosomal STR markers are they are polymorphic, they are present on all humans, and they are selectively neutral. And these are the alleles, these numbers, whatever you can see on your screen, on the respective STR marker, they are the alleles. These 14, 17, 15, 17, 11, 12, they are called as alleles. That, and the characteristics of these alleles are that they are co-dominant in nature. And it can be homozygous or it may be heterozygous. There may be some common alleles, there may be some rare alleles. And it, uh, what do we consider when we talk about the genotype? You see, this is the genotype. When both the alleles on a STR marker are put together, this is called as a genotype. This is individual allele, 14 is an individual allele, 17 is another individual allele. When both the alleles, 10, 12, are put together, that is called as the genotype. And when uh, all the genotypes of all the STR markers analyzed are put together, they are called as the DNA profile. So now the question comes, whether the STR label, whether the allele label, whether the genotype label, or whether the DNA profile label, at which level we achieve uniqueness for the purpose of individualization. Now coming to the basic fundamental rule of genetics, which is uh, Mendel's first law. This Mendel's first law it is says that uh, each pair of alleles segregate from each other in the formation of gametes that may be a spermatozoa in the form of a oocyte. And half of the gene gametes, they carry one allele and the other half of the uh, gamete, it carry another allele. Similarly, if, if we consider about the second law of Mendel, the principle of independent assortment, the segregation of each pair of allele is always independent of the segregation of other pair of allele during the formation of gametes. And this type of Mendelian inheritance of genes, they can be measured using the rule of probability. And when more than two factors are taken together, there comes the rule of product rule of probability. That means when the probability of two independent events, they occur simultaneously, the probability can be measured by, uh, by simply calculating the product of each of the individual probabilities. 
again coming to coming back to my previous slide we have achieved this dna profile now we have to calculate what is the random match probability of this dna profile if we consider frequency of the genotype then again this is the basic fundamental rule of mendelian genetics that to calculate the frequency of a genotype for heterozygous allele for heterozygous genotype we should calculate it as 2pq and for homozygous alleles it should be calculated as p square where p and q are the are the allele frequencies and for the calculation of random match probability of a dna profile so we need to go for the product rule product rule that means the individual uh, genotype probabilities they must be multiplied so after calculating and multiplying each individual genotype frequencies i found the random match probability of this uh, population of this dna profile to be 1.77 into 10 to the power minus 29 you imagine this value how small it is 1.77 into 10 to the power 29 current if we compare it with the current world population current world population is around 7.8 billion that means at the level of at the magnitude of 10 to the power 9 and the current indian population is around 1.3 billion all of you must be knowing it so now see now imagine how discriminatory how discrimination uh, of a dna profile can generate so by considering all these statistical probabilities we have achieved such a value that can match nowhere to the current world population or indian population put together so this means the unique profile this is a unique profile which has been used for the purpose of individualization and it can be achieved only by analyzing autosomal hysteria analysis now see uh, if we analyze three loci then uh, the discriminatory power may be one in 500 individual if we increase the number of loci to six it may give you a resolution of 1 upon 200,000. Then as you keep on increasing the number of loci, the discriminatory power increases. That is the basic rule. But what next? Should we keep on increasing the number of STR markers? Should that be our aim? Definitely not. So what should be the criteria? The criteria should be we should search for the quality STR markers and which are population specific in nature. For that, all of you must be knowing that US, it has its uh, recommended set of core STR loci. Similarly, Euro European standard, it has some STR loci recommended. Uh, UK, German, Interpol, and China, they have their recommended core STR loci. But what about Indian population? We don't have any of our studies which shows that which marker is more useful in our population, which marker is less useful, and which marker set is more useful in our population. To assess the quality of a STR marker, any STR marker, there are some analyzed parameters. Uh, those parameters may be total allele number in that particular population, total possible genotypes, uh, what is the homozygosity level, what is the heterozygosity level, what is the polymorphic information content. Besides that, some forensic parameters and paternity parameters are also considered when, examine, when examining a STR marker. Forensic parameters may be matching probability of that STR marker or its power of discrimination or power of exclu exclusion if we consider about the fraternity parameter and typical paternity index. This is, this is the list of the 20 codis STR marker. This is, this is the STR markers. And if we talk about the currently available uh, available kits that uh, kits then mostly uh, in all of the labs uh, throughout the globe they use either promega uh, fusion 60 kit or uh, global failure kit or pan global kit from CRID or investigator 24 plex kit so all these kits they are the new generation kits all are the six day all work on six day chemistry and they have the 20 codis str markers what I want to highlight here is that 
besides these 20 codes str markers those recommended codes loci all of them they have some additional markers what are they they may be pentadi pentai or ac33 and they are included in the kits but they are not in the list of recommended kits uh, yes this is the this is the example of uh, how an str marker looks like and uh, here uh, we know they are uh, they exist in the head and tail arrangement and in this example uh, there exist 12 gata repeats and uh, generally we use uh, for forensic practice we use the str markers those have uh, two to seven nucleotide repeats they are common in the genome they occur on an average of around 10000 uh, 10000 nucleotides in the genome they are highly polymorphic they are stably inherited and they are well studied very well studied if we talk about again the those 20 recommended str loci these are the these are their repeat units and they may be complex simple or compound and if we talk about the repeat units the repeat unit may be tetranucleotide repeat or trinucleotide uh, trinucleotide str repeats i am talking about the 20 codis loci those are the recommended loci but I have already spoken about some non-codis loci which are already there in the kit in the form of either pentadi, pentai or ac33. If we talk about pentadi, it's a pentanucleotide repeat. Similarly, pentai is also pentanucleotide repeat. But ac33, it is a tetranucleotide repeat, uh, repeat in nature, but it is, it is a complex form of STR markers. So I uh, it formed on study where I compared the utility of the pentanucleotide repeat and the tetranucleotide repeat. So for the example, I have given here uh, two tetranucleotide repeats that is 2S, uh, uh, D2S1338 and D19S433 and two pentanucleotide STR markers that is pentad and pentai. So when we compare these four markers, two tetranucleotide repeat marker and two pentanucleotide repeat marker, you see, this is the total allele number that we observed in our population. For the, for the tetranucleotide repeat STR markers, we observed the total allele number as 11 and 17. 11, 11 and uh, 6. But for the pentanucleotide repeat STR marker, you see how the total allele number has been increased to 17 and 10. And all, the, all of a sudden, when we analyzed other forensic parameters and paternity parameters, this pentanucleotide STR marker, it shows huge increase or huge evidentiary value in the form of all the forensic and paternity parameters analyzed in this study. So now we have found that in our population, these tetranucleotide STR markers, those uh, have been included in the recommended set of loci, they work. But these pentanucleotide STR markers, they work even better. They have a huge evidentiary value. They have a huge discriminatory power. They have a high heterozygosity content in our population. So we can, it can be considered to be more useful in our population. F when we analyzed all the forensic and paternity parameters of all the STR markers, you can see Pentai, AC33, FGA, D21S11, they have a huge power. They have a huge power in our population in comparison to other STR markers which are recommended but not useful in our population. Then I performed another study to, come, uh, to uh, see which marker set is more useful. For that, what we, uh, what we did, we made some sets set of str markers those are commonly available in the uh, in the kits those may be recommended or may not be recommended so for this this is the parameter on the basis of which we uh, grouped all the str markers commonly available str markers together uh, for example set one we consider all the uh, 13 codes str marker and set two, we considered all the mass markers listed in expanded codes, that is 23 mark, uh, 20 markers. Similarly, uh, for set 19, all the markers which are having the matching probability of uh, less than 0 0.08. In that way, we grouped uh, the marker sets in 19 sets. 
and you see now you see the difference in our population this is set 3 set 3 what it says it says all the 23 markers group together it has it is the total possible genotypes uh, label at 1.85 into 10 to the power 40 and 1.16 into 10 to the power minus 28 but two another two marker sets that is set 14 and set 17 you can see uh, the value says uh, it is as 4.67 into 10 to the power 30 through 4 and 2.50 into 10 to the power 30 pro 34 but what i want to highlight here is that this is not recommended what is recommended currently is that this set 2 that is the 20 code system marker what is the value the value is 2.33 into 10 to the power 33 whereas this uh, set 14 and set 17 they are showing a huge value a higher value but the most peculiar thing about these two sets is are that set 14 and set 17 is that they include only 19 markers whereas the recommended currently currently recommended str sets it is says you must include 20 str markers that means now we can be pretty sure that we do not need no, uh, an increase increased number of str marker what we need is that the quality marker they may be lesser in number and more suitable in our population Uh, this this is the uh, this is the set of markers that is set 14 and set 17 what we analyzed here here we included three non code sstr markers actually pentad pentai and ac33 and uh, for this uh, study uh, the marker sets which were found more useful uh, the set 14 and set 17 in set 14 what the, what was the parameter used the parameter used was all markers with polymorphic information content is more than or equal to 0.70 and set 17 all the markers with power of exclusion more than 0.50 yes yeah this is the publication based upon this study what we published uh, in this current year only and one more aspect what i want to highlight over here this is a common str profile now you can see here is another marker besides this autosomal str marker all the kid they will be having some extra markers that is called as sex determining marker all of you must be knowing that is amelogenin what the amelogenin shows if it is shows only one uh, one pick that means x it is a female if it is of x and y of equal head then it is a male and if it is x and y both with the, with the, with the, uh, with a height imbalance then it is a mixed profile You see, this is a simple STR autosomal STR profile with only X amplified. So, what we can consider, we can consider it as a female profile. But now, when we amplified a, uh, when we amplified Y chromosome, here you can see there is an amplification. Where from it comes? This is X, only X. That means it is supposed to be a female origin. But here. at the y chromosome str analysis it is shows a amplification that means y chromosome is present but another peculiar observation is that it lacks six y str markers this six at this six point there was a deletion but rest all other y str markers they got amplified the deletion uh, at uh, d y is 570 576 458 449 uh, 481 and 627 so what is, what is the phenomena if we look into the literature then amyloid deletion this this phenomenon is called as amyloid deletion and it is a global problem and if we look into the y chromosome map this is the amyloid region actually in this amyloid region in addition to the amyloid marker there are some other markers that is uh, dys 570 576 458481 all these markers they got deleted in addition to the amyloid in that process all other str markers they get amplified but these six markers they do not get amplified in addition to the amyloid so uh, the event can follow such a path where both x and y can be amplified or only x can be amplified x can be amplified this is a normal this in in this phenomenon this can be a normal female in this can in this case it can be a 
male with amyl y deletion similarly amyl x deletion can be found both amyl x and y deletion can be found and female with x deletion in one chromosome this can also be found so in that way we propose some alternative markers alter alternative uh, sex determining sex determining markers in addition to the amyl genome you see you can see uh, all this uh, new generation kit in addition to the amyl uh, marker they have some extra uh, extra sex de determining marker in the form of either dys391 y indel or dys570 or dys576 uh, but what we suggest is that there should be some alternative str markers in the form of either dxys156 or sts what is the advantage is that you see amelogenin we do not have a control there if it is a female only x is amplified and if it is a male both x and y is y are amplified but in case of female we do not have another control to ascertain that whether it is of whether it is uh, from pure female or it is from deletion in nature so for that purpose we can use we can target some other alternative markers in the form of either sts sry tspy dxys156 dyz1 or atlz1 <clears throat> so after uh, talking all about these uh, points during my lecture uh, the following takeaway notes i want to highlight that autosomal str analysis is a pref is prefer for individualization over x y or mitochondrial dna analysis with the increase in the number of str markers the resolution of a dna profile increases we should use population specific markers uh, in the form of quality markers and pentanucleotide repeat str markers were found to be more useful over tetranucleotide str markers uh, if we consider about our population and three non codis str markers that is penta d penta e and ac33 they were found useful in our central indian population and amyl y deletion is a global problem addition of uh, dys391 and y indel only may not provide the solution uh, to amyl y deletion detection alternative sex determining markers such as uh, steroid sulfatase sts and dxys156 they can be used for a proper diagnosis of amyloid deletion cases finally uh, i would uh, like to quote not knowing is always a blessing it gives you ample of opportunity to feel that you know everything of this world but knowing thing is always a pain this lead you, uh, you to feel that how ignorant you are because you are in a ocean thank you Thanks a lot.